There you go. Okay, well, welcome everyone to the first conversation of Why Not Me. My name is Sarah Papp, and I am here with Tasha Dalrymple. And we uh, teamed up to form this conversation for a number of different reasons. But one of the main focuses is being a place to inspire and to answer correct questions and really share the spirit of the feeling of why not me? Why can't anything happen to me? So before we get started, I'm just going to go over a few housekeeping things so that we know how to join the conversation if you have any questions. So one is that you have the opportunity to raise your hand during the call, and what you need to do is down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a button that says participants. Just click on that button, and then there is an option at the top left where you can click raise hand. And either both me and Tasha or just Tasha will be able to see that, and then we'll let you know. Um, when we see it and answer your question. Also, everyone is muted at this point, so we'll also unmute you for the question as well. Is there anything that I left out, or should we just dive on in? I think we can just dive on in. Okay, cool. So as I said, this is really a place for inspiration. Tasha and I are really good friends and we talk a lot and have found that when we talk and we share about what's going on in our lives and then we get that boost from the other person, that it just feels amazing and we wanted to share some of that. And some of the idea of this started with one of those conversations that we were having and I had come up with some idea. I don't remember exactly what it was at this point, but I think that I may have told Tasha that I wanted to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that I can be on Ellen and that I can tell her about, I can tell her ideas that I have, or really it was almost the idea of why not me? And I was like, I wanna go, I wanna be there. And Tasha's like, well, why not you? Why couldn't it be you? And then she told me the story of a time when she was on an airplane with a woman named Mary, <laughs> <laughs> who's here, and uh, who told her a story which really stuck with me. So, Tasha, tell, tell the story for, for those who didn't get to read the email that you sent out. Yeah, so this would have been, uh, I think it was August of 2012. I know it was that summer that um, I had gone home to Nova Scotia. I was still living in Alberta. And then on my return flight, I went from Halifax to Ottawa and then Ottawa on to Edmonton. And I got on the plane and I was seated next to Mary. And of course, we just struck up a conversation and really um, chatted non-stop the whole way um, for two hours and a little bit. But um, at some point I started telling Mary about wanting to go to Nepal and that Nepal trip was happening in October and I didn't really have at the time um, the funds to go. And, and I was also a little bit out of my comfort zone. <laughs> to go this idea of going trekking in in Nepal um, and Mary started telling me a story about Mark Tewksbury and I knew who he was um, he's a former Canadian Olympic swimmer but I didn't know the details of the story that she proceeded to tell me which was he was at the Olympics in Barcelona in 1992 and he was kind of debating what his chances might be of getting uh, a medal there and looking at his competition and, you know, um, kind of questioning whether it would be possible for him. And then he asked himself that question, why not me? I'm here, I trained just like everybody else did, and it's as possible for me as anybody else. And 
basically he ended up using that question, I think, to motivate him to go on and win gold that year. And I was like, that is so cool. Like one little question, which it's true. I mean, he was there and his chances were as good as anybody else's. And so I left that flight and obviously remembered that story and remembered Mary and we've stayed in touch off and on since then. And um, what happened after that was I ended up um, going on that trip to Nepal just two months later. And I think that things like that, that conversation is what kind of opened my mind to it being possible for me. And then of course that's what allowed it to happen. Yeah. 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 And I think that a lot of times that it really is just asking that question and seeing that maybe it really doesn't even have to be as hard as we make it out to be, or maybe things will just work themselves out. But so often what we do is the complete opposite of that. And we think of all of the reasons why it can't happen. And then the momentum doesn't even really get started, doesn't even move forward for making what we want to have happen, happen. So I think that that's like one of the reasons why it's such a powerful question, because it just says, I am equal to everybody else when it comes to what can happen and opportunities and, and everything. And that when you do that, then I think that things really do open up. And things really are much more possible than when you just meet it from this place of this is what my life looks like, or these are the rules, or this is how much it costs, or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so in that case, for example, me going to Nepal, one of the things that Mary had said was she mentioned something about uh, tax-free savings accounts and how that could be used to go on a trip, you know? There's hmm. that money just sitting there, and I was like, yeah, well, I have a tax-free savings account. I can go on that trip. I do have the money. But I hadn't thought about it that way. And in the end, I got the money someplace else and didn't even have to use that tax-free savings account. But I think, like I said, just that opening up to it being possible or there being a way for it to happen allowed something else to happen that wouldn't have if I had thought it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's just kind of first uh, removing the, the limit that we put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the main things. Because we do that all the time. One of the other things we talked about was um, so many people who have inspired me who have physical limitations, but that they decided that that wasn't going to hold them back from what they, they wanted. And um, I shared a story recently about Amy Purdy, who if you're not familiar with Amy Purdy, she... Um, at the age of 19, got bacterial meningitis. So within 24 hours, she went from being healthy to feeling like she was having the flu to being in the ICU and near, very near death. And then in order to save her life, they had to amputate both of her legs. I think she lost her kidneys and her spleen it's a lot. But yet she decided that it wasn't going to hold her back from doing anything, even though she lost both of her legs, that she was still going to figure out how to snowboard again. And then now she's competed on Dancing with the Stars. And like, she was one person where I'm like, this is amazing. Like the times where, <clears throat> there's been times in my life where I once thought that running a marathon was impossible. 
Like I couldn't even fathom that because I had a really hard time going beyond three miles. And then I went up to six miles and then I would hit the wall at six miles until I decided it was possible. And then, I mean, this is, it's been a few years now since I've run one, but um, it's the same thing to me of just this deciding that it's possible, that it, I could do that. I, who couldn't manage six miles, could do 26. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's the heart of why not me and why we're doing it. There's so many people who I feel like have inspired us from, from physical limitations to just the mental limitation that we put on ourselves, but they're really, <clears throat> they're not there. Because why couldn't anything happen for any of us, really? Mm -hmm. Why not? So that, this is the thing, when Sarah and I were talking about these things, we were like, you know, it would be really great if we could just get a group of people together to talk about these things. And of course, she's in Portland, Oregon, and I'm in Nova Scotia. So us getting together in person could happen. It's definitely possible, and I'm sure someday it will. Um, but in the meantime, we wanted to do something. And... Um, I woke up one day at six o'clock in the morning. I was like, we really need to do this. <laughs> and so I texted her and I said, remember that conversation we had about how we wanted to get these people together to talk about why not me? I was like, we need to do that. And then I was like, and oh, by the way, I hope that your phone is turned off because just because it's six o'clock in the morning here and I'm up, it's 2 a.m. in Portland and I would be waking up. So yeah. Then. Yeah, so then my other thing is that I have wanted to sort of form, I want to say almost like a movement, like this energy of we're standing up, we're not alone, and we're all kind of standing up and saying, you know what, I have a dream too, and maybe I haven't even told anybody what it is, but now I'm going to kind of, I'm going to own it. I'm gonna say that this is mine, and you might think it's impossible, but I have just decided that it's not. And this is my, this is, I am going to cherish this. And I'm gonna cherish it in a way that I am going to share it with other people. And maybe I'm going to put it on, like we have a Facebook group, so that's a space where it could be like, what's your dream? What is it that you would really, really want? What is something that seems completely impossible, but that there's this part of you that would be over the moon if it were to happen? And then, and then claim it and say on the Facebook, this is my why not me dream. And I'm going to own it and I'm going to share it. And I'm going to have that be some of that momentum forward of saying that it could happen rather than the opposite momentum that most of us live in. So that's another kind of like goal that I have with this is, but I think that the community energy of this and having people back you up and saying, yeah, your dream totally is possible. I'm so glad you shared it. Because why not you? Absolutely. And I think um, one of the things that we both find important is helping lift other people up. So um, if you share your dream and you put it out there and you claim it and own it, then that gives someone else not permission to do it. They don't have permission. But it inspires them to be like, oh, she's saying that. Well, well, I can do that too. I can say. And then it gives them, you know, that um, motivation or whatever they need in order to actually take the first step. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I think sometimes it also like sparks ideas too, because I think a lot of times there's a lot of crossover from things that we want, even if it seems completely separate, but it could have the same energy to it. It could have the same silliness to it. It could have, you know, whatever to it that can also spark your own idea and say, yeah, this is something that I want in my life. And I'm now going to say that I really want it. Yeah. And I think probably for both of us in, in coaching our clients, we have a lot of people who maybe have these dreams or they're not quite sure what their dreams are, but there's, you know, a fear of something maybe blocking them from admitting what they want and putting it out there. And um, I think things like this, like what we're doing here today, is helps people not be afraid anymore. Yeah, because I think, I think fear is a big piece of it too. And I think that a lot of times we want things and then we stop because we're afraid of even getting it. So what if I have all of that stuff? Then I think that a lot of times, a lot of what my clients run into, and rarely but once I caught it with myself, of this, what would people think of me if I actually did have that? You know, it's like that, that stuff. It's this, this upper limit that we give ourselves of, I, that can't happen to me because... Or if that did happen, <clears throat> other people would hate me or other people would think that they can't relate to me anymore or things would fall apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I always think of those kind of two questions and I don't know if it's a quote by somebody or not. So if it is and I'm not giving them credit, sorry. Um, but they say, you know, uh, what would you do if you didn't worry about what people thought about you? And what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I think those kinds of questions um, can really get people excited about what it is they know is under the surface that they're longing for. Yeah. So you don't have to have those quotes that you sent me, do you? <clears throat> Which ones? Of allowing, of um, receiving. I just uh, remember it was allowing myself to receive. Oh, yeah. Well, I know the one for sure because I, I have it as a daily reminder on my phone. Oh, okay. There you go. I set myself a reminder in the morning to um, set the tone for the day. And I started this a while ago. And I don't know, I just every morning when I see it, I think, yes, yes, that's what I'm going to do today. And it simply is just let me feel worthy to receive what's meant for me. Yeah. 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 That's so good. I love that one. I have to write it down. Mm -hmm. Although I have it since you sent it to me, but I have to have it more prominent. So I'll read it every day. Yeah. And I do have another kind of, well, I have a couple that I keep right on my computer. So I don't know if you can see that, but it is, I deserve to earn an abundant living. And I expand my capacity to receive. Mm hmm so those are the ones that I have there as well. So I don't know if those are things other people would be interested in doing, but I think it helps to kind of keep your focus on what it is you want to attract versus looking at what you don't have. Yeah, for me, it helps me focus just where my, my thinking is going. Mm -hmm. so I, I do similar stuff of just paying attention to where my thoughts and recognizing when I'm putting up barriers. And it's funny how I'll put up sneaky little barriers because it's just, it's just old habit, really. It's just the old way or that's the, what most recently, you know, I've been thinking about doing some changes 
to my website and some things with my business and I have, so here's just like a little example of thinking, oh, well, I need to have enough like this budget for the full project to be done. And then I kind of thought, well, wait a second, I kind of want to do it now and not when I have this dollar amount in mind. So what if I just approached somebody and was like, what could you do for this? Or what if we just did this section? And now I'm realizing that stuff can actually happen without me thinking that it has to be a certain way. So it's once I eliminated this, like, oh, well, it has to look this way, to just be like, what if it doesn't? And I could just get started now. And then it starts coming together, maybe differently than what I had originally hoped, but it could even be better than what I had originally hoped or dreamt of. Absolutely. And I think kind of what you're saying there is the biggest thing in attracting whatever it is you want after you kind of claimed or owned it is letting go of how and yeah. when it's going to happen. So like you yeah. said, what if it didn't look like that? Yeah. And the funny thing is, is when I let go of when, I swear that it shows up around the corner. <laughs> or when I'm all like, yeah. oh, when this, then it's like later, 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 later. And it yeah. kind of almost stays stuck out there in the future where it never happens or it's yeah. really slow to happen. Yeah. 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 Oh. So I'm really curious about the question that you received. Yes. I will read it here. Um, I'm getting older and I'm not wanting to admit I may someday soon need reading glasses. So I'm doing like, you know. Are you holding it out? Yeah. Longer than your arm distance? No. I'm not, but anyway, <laughs> one of those days soon. Okay, so um, this person had read my little newsletter that I had sent out about the Mark Tewksbury story, and I had said in there, you know, not to wait for things to happen, to start creating them, mm -hmm. um, and so he asks, when does creating something become controlling and not going with the flow? I always struggle with this concept, striving to create something, but always worrying that I'm trying to control it. So how should we create something without trying to cr control it is probably the best question. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think, Sarah? What would you... If you're going to answer this guy back, what would you tell him? So creating somebody without control. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is somewhat of what we were just saying mm -hmm. is not being attached to the, the when and, and even the what, because I think a lot of times there's nothing wrong with dreaming really big and then having it show up and looking different than we may have expected. Because to me, I think that when you have a dream and if you have a, a why not me dream or whatever it is, it could be something that feels small or something that feels huge, that it's like, it's like casting, um, like when you're fishing and you wanna cast it out there. You know, it's just, thro it's throwing it out there and not being attached to how and when it may show up. And I think that when we start to try to control it and say that it needs to look a certain way or that it's, you know, all of this, that once you dive into that controlling, gripping, attached energy, that it just, well, one, it takes you out of a feel-good place, and then I think that it really takes your path of getting there. Um, I think that you kind of turn away from it. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you don't get back on it, but I think that it can make your path there a lot more windy. So I think that it's kind of like, yeah, saying this is what I want. 
And I'm not trying to control anything by saying that I want. There's nothing wrong with, with desire. But it's saying, this is what I really want. And I'm throwing it out there. And I'm moving toward it. And I'm going to take action to move toward making this happen. But with an openness of seeing where my direction may change as, as things go along. Or if something comes to me and then I think, you know, I think I'm going to head in this direction. Or if it doesn't come at a certain time. I was just talking to somebody today and reminding her she applied for a job and she didn't get it was devastated. Mm. And she felt like it was taking her off of this path where she was on the path and she was there. And I said, what would happen if you changed the energy from this is happening to me to this is happening for me? And you saw this not getting the job where you could almost say, there's good reason I didn't get this because what's coming next is so much better. So to me, that it's where you can hold those two, those two feelings, these two energies at the same time of desire and wanting to create while still not feeling like you're controlling it and gripping and attaching to the outcome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you were saying grasping, I always think um, someone had kind of given this example one time of if, if you had, say there was a feather floating in the air and you went to grasp that feather, you would actually create a swirl of air around it and send it flying in another direction, farther away from you. And so it's like when you're trying to grasp onto something, like you were talking about a kind of peaceful feeling versus grasping, which is, I'm not going to say stressful, but it could feel stressful. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever you are longing for is not going to come when you're in that stressful place. So I think the other part of, um, creating what you want comes from creating that feeling state that you think you're going to have once you get the thing that you want. So if you get your dream job, how are you going to feel when that happens? How will your life be different? And so then you come into your life now and say, okay, I don't have that job right now, that dream job. But if I did, I would feel this way, and this is what my life would look like. And then take those tiny steps to do things now that give you that same feeling. And then when you're in that feeling state and you're in that flow of receiving that, you more easily attract the same thing because like attracts like. All right. Yeah. And then you also, I think, sometimes are also able to see what's already present mm -hmm. in your life. For sure. Yeah. Because I've done that very thing for myself, too, with feelings that I wanted to have or things that I desired. And then I went to the feeling state. What did I really want it to feel like? And then it's like, oh, wow. I've been ignoring the fact that all of these things actually give me this feeling state and I haven't even seen how much I have been, um, how much is coming to me and that when I receive it, when I have the energy of receiving it, that I can feel it and experience it more than when I'm also just in the seeking it out. So again, I think that it's kind of that duality energy there. Yeah, and when you have that gratitude for what you already have or the small things that you're receiving, then you get more. But mm -hmm. if you aren't recognizing what the universe is already bringing you, it wouldn't make sense for you to receive more. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So his question, how should we create something without trying to control it? I think. Anything else you want to add to what we've already said? Well, to me, it's in the energy of creating, of what does that really feel like? You know, 
I think that we, we approach creating a lot from a very um, mind-based place mm. a lot of the time. And that we think about creating, but we really take a step back. So what does it mean to really create something? And what does it feel like, as you were just saying, what does it feel like to really create something? And maybe that's even going back to other times where we've created something where it felt amazing. Mm -hmm. And it could be if you've done art and you've created something artistic or if you're a, you've baked or cooked or whatever it is where you feel like you've created something and you've enjoyed the experience of creating it. So what does that really, really feel like? Because I found that when I create something and I'm really just in the flow of creative energy, it, that I, I'm using my brain, of course, but it's not the driving force. That there's something else that feels like a creative driving force and that the brain is almost kind of hanging out there in the background. It's not chit-chattering away at me all the time. So to me, with the thinking about creating something without controlling it, it's really accessing the true, honest, creative energy. And if you don't know what that is, then I would say to approach it from more of a playful place. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about something that you've created. For me, it's, it's art. Although I also bake. That's probably why those two examples like came straight to my head but when I think about painting or if I think about doing something really creative and I'm just in that I'm so not attached or grasping or trying to control what I'm creating when I do it goes it doesn't look good it just yeah. doesn't it looks like I thought too hard when I'm really really creating something very very well I'm allowing the canvas to tell me where to go mm -hmm. Like I'll notice that paint will go in a certain direction and then I feel like, oh, I think I kind of want to add this here or do this there. And I honestly think that life is the same way, that whatever else we are doing in life, it's the same. It's just kind of, it may not be a canvas for you. It could be something totally else, something else, but that it, it doesn't feel like something that you need to control when you're really in the true creative energy. That's my take. Yeah, and I find for me, um, not necessarily even in creating anything, but just in life in general, that it's, it's that follow your feel good feeling. If it doesn't feel good, then I'm unlikely to do it. Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't gonna be tough things that come up or challenges, but is that um, what I like to call the difference between sludge or serenity? So mm -hmm. if I'm doing something, even if it's a challenge and it feels like really awful, I know there's something not right. Yeah. But if it feels right inside me or it feels peaceful or it just feels like I'm drawn to do it then that's what I call that sort of serenity and I think that's part of you know creating and not trying to control it is your intuition is going to guide you and mm -hmm. if it feels like sludge you're probably trying to control it if it feels like serenity then your intuition is guiding you on the path that you need to go on. Yeah. So it's taking note of those little um, hits that, you know, when people think they need to push through something or make it happen. <laughs> there is no making it happen. That's, yeah. that's that illusion of control that right. I think we have. So it's more about showing up to what it, feels right to you and allowing that to be. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that you can create so much from a state of ease. Yes. 
And, and I think the other really important thing is that the universe at large <laughs> always has the bigger picture. So when we're here doing our creating or, you know, wanting something to happen, we're like an ant on the ground that can only see a little area around us. Whereas the universe is an eagle soaring above everything that can see what's going on. So we have to trust in that bigger plan that we don't always see and keep taking those steps. Yeah, and then that's something that we can practice, either having eagle vision or having the mouse vision. Mm -hmm. That When I do that, that takes me out of that place of, of stress and pushing hard and all of that is to say, okay, well, what if I were to take a step back and try to have eagle vision with this, with whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish? And one, when I do that, I can usually see how much I've actually done rather than when I'm in mouse vision. It's like, there's more to do. There's more to do. There's more to do, yeah. you know? And that, that completely takes it out of the energy of actually making it happen. But, um, or at least making it more difficult for it to happen. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think that you're right. I've also seen that that there's, there's more than we are completely aware of. You know, there's a larger plan. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. That we can't always see how our course may change direction, take a hard right turn, but that it's actually a hard right turn onto our perfect path. Yes. Yeah. So I'm curious if others have questions. I know that some have joined in maybe a little after we got started. So if you didn't hear the intro, if you want to ask a question, all you need to do is click participants down at the bottom and then select your, um, and then I think you just click raise hand, right? You don't even have to select your name. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. It could be about anything of um, how you um, can make things happen to if you completely disagree with anything that we've been talking about right now, you can raise your hand and say, I think you guys are nuts. Or if you just have a cool story you want to share with us. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I can keep talking about this subject. That's easy for me. Oh, yay, Colleen. Are you there, Colleen? Okay. Did you unmute her? No, well, she shows that she's not muted. Are you there, Colleen? Hmm. And Colleen. Oh, now, now I'm unmuted on the phone. Oh, there you go. Okay. I, I think it's because I'm on the phone. I started out on the phone and then I did this computer. So I have both going on. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm not sure. But anyway, um, yeah, I just, I just loved hearing about the, the person uh, who had lost her legs. Amy Purdy? You know, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't let that get in her way because I keep putting off my coaching business because of this vertigo and chronic migraine that I have all the time. But I don't want to anymore. I'm done with that. It's like I've got it. I've got if this is what I got to live with. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I don't want to say that it that I have to live with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know I do today. I got to stay in today, and that's it. That's the only way I'm going to be able to survive. So I got to figure out what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's no reason why you couldn't make a coaching business happen with wherever you're at. 
honestly, I think that that's what makes a really good coach if it's what you want to do. So if thinking about coaching feels good to you, then, then you will be the best coach for, for where you're at because of where you're at. Right, right. And I, I think the hard part for me is, you know, like charging and then having to say, oh, I'm having a bad day. So I've kind of come up to the conclusion for right now, let's not charge. Let's just keep doing it. Well, and then come, come to that later. You know, that way I don't feel so stressed about it. I, <laughs> I don't need stress, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and then you might also just think about, like, so what's the worst thing that can happen if you say I need to reschedule? Right, right. Yeah, people have rescheduled. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, having any form of, uh, of, of anything that's going on physically, because illness doesn't, doesn't always hit it for everything that we're talking about. Because like Amy losing her legs, when she was healed and everything, she didn't have a, an illness. It was just something that we right. would you call like a physical limitation. Mm -hmm. um, but right away, so she even said that she was being wheeled into the operating room and that she had in her head that she was not going to miss next season's snowboarding. She was going to figure out how to be on the board by next season. It just wasn't going to stop her because she hadn't missed a season yet and she wasn't going to let this stop her. So. And not to say that she got her first pair of prosthetic limbs and then she strapped on the board and all worked. It didn't. She ended up having to make her own shoes or her own feet, I should say, to fit into the shoes to work on the board. And she teamed up with somebody and then they made it. And now this is something that other people can buy and it's turned into something much bigger. But I think that it's even thinking about you of saying, what if first... You said, what if this weren't a limitation? And I could coach starting with where I'm at now. And I no longer saw this as a limitation, even if it meant that I needed to change the way that I did things versus somebody else. Just like the way that Amy Purdy went, got on her snowboard versus somebody who had, who had not lost their legs. So it's almost like, what would be your way of building your prosthetic limb to go into this, the snowboarding boot kind of thing, you know? The same yeah. thing. You might need to make it work differently for you than it would for me. That doesn't mean that you couldn't be coaching. Doesn't mean that you couldn't also be charging for coaching and saying, I'm sorry, I need to reschedule. Right, right. That's true. That is true. And the person that I have who is interested in coaching, um, it's all about MS. And so then I go to a place of, how can I help somebody who has MS? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but it's, really, it's really no different. It's no different is what you're saying. And it's to me, it's, we're, we're looking at it as a limitation. To me, you're like the perfect person to help somebody with MS. Because, because to me, if you have a client who also has some physical challenges and then you say, I'm going to reschedule because I'm not feeling well, it's essentially saying I'm honoring my body today and I'm honoring where I'm at and I'm practicing acceptance for where I am at right now and we can reschedule. That you then become, you then become almost like a, a, sh a shining guiding light for ways that other people can still live and still move on and say, this is where I'm at and it's uncomfortable. And if I could change it, I would, but right now I can't. So I'm just going to practice being with it and then telling people what's going to work for me and what's not. I like that. Yeah, and so a couple things kind of come to mind for me, Colleen, and 
And the first one is, and again, I don't know the exact quote or the wording, but it's, we often think that our struggles are obstacles when quite often the struggles are, are the pathway <laughs> to take us where we need to go. So I think for you, having this vertigo, you, you know, you're looking at it as a limitation, but it, it, it's really like the doorway that is going to open you up to what you're meant to be doing. And like Sarah said, you know, I think it's, you'd be the perfect person to help someone who has MS because you have that compassion and empathy and understanding um, to what they're going through. I mean, it, it's different, yes, but as opposed to somebody like me that hasn't had either one of those things, you know, not that I don't have compassion and empathy for people, but I wouldn't necessarily understand it as well as you would. Oh, oh. I, I guess I, I, a bit of the bit of me, a little part of me is afraid of the blind spot that's there <laughs> because am I going to get caught up in their story? So it's, I'm going to be coaching myself along the way. <laughs> right. And I think that's true for all of us because right. Sarah and I are a version of our clients, right? So mm -hmm. we see mm -hmm. ourselves in them. Um, and so that brings me to part two of what kind of popped into my head is for you to ask the universe for help, for support and guidance as you work with these people and work through your own struggles. You know, there's a whole cosmos out there that is of higher intelligence than our thinking <laughs> minds that um, right right yeah you know and that is true whenever i coach and get myself out of the way stuff comes up that i have no idea where it came from <laughs> it's typically the way it works so i really don't probably need to be concerned about how it will go it will go exactly the way it's supposed to go absolutely yeah and i also think that it's okay to have blind spots and that you'll probably, you know, you'll, I think that you'll spot your blind spot because you're already kind of looking for it. And, and right. it's, it's okay. It's okay to have your own struggles and to coach somebody else who's struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with. Right. To me, it helps me be really, really humble when I feel like I'm coaching somebody on the very same topic, which happens so often, the very same thing that I'm struggling with. And um, it reminds me, I wish I had it nearby, because I have it written down. But it's something of, um, let me be the ocean where the rivers and streams always, always pour into because the ocean is lower than all of those. So let, let me be lower than all of those other channels of water. And that's how it is with my clients of, it's not of being in any place where I've got it all figured out because I don't. <laughs> but really being in more of a humble place of, when I'm with you, it's amazing what I can spot because I'm not quite, I'm not deep in it. Um, and then when I can spot it in somebody else and I see it inside myself, I feel so humble and then I do my own work. Mm -hmm. Good. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. makes me feel inspired just 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 to go ahead and do it <laughs> stop using it for your excuse <laughs> um, yeah absolutely. i mean i'm not really using it for my excuse but but i have to i don't i'm tired of it living in it so let's do something more with it mm -hmm. yeah there's no reason why you can't have a coaching business and and 
anything else. <laughs> That's right. Why not me? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not you? That's right. So Mary and Melissa, so you guys are still here. We've got some time left. I'd love if either one of you would like to ask a question, share a story. No pressure, though, no pressure. <laughs> only a little, only a little pressure. <laughs> Maybe even tell us why you came today, what you hope to get out of it. But if not, that's okay, too, because I have more stories I can share, too. Oh. Melissa's unmuted. There she is. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> I could have unmuted you. Me? Sorry. We can hear you. Oh, oh perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. You know, a couple of things that came to me. Um, and really kind of resonate from my from my grades and a teenager and in I in the last few years, I've uh, started to get into alternative medicine and uh, started practicing medical Qigong. And, um, you know, I guess for me, this, you know, it was, a, it was a limitation. I put it on myself. At, uh, probably five months. Headaches and I'm able to... Alternative medicine is away from I mean, you bring your sense, you release all the sense. And now I, I rarely take um, any medication for my headaches. Uh, it's it's hard to believe. I was chatting with my sister-in-law not that long ago, and she asked me if I had an Advil, and I said, "But I have some peppermint cream." <laughs> so so uh, it's uh, you know there's there's a lot that open yourself. Up. How we all have in for us. You start uh, Yeah, I can relate to a lot of what you said. That um can you hear me okay, Tasha? Yes. Okay. I used to have chronic headaches and migraines as well. And then I sought um, help from acupuncture and that took care of it for me. But I think that it's also this combination of alternative medicine and then also living the life that I really wanted to live that helped me get to such a happier place. So I think that even when we start to do things that work better for us saying I'm not going to let the headache stop me anymore I'm not going to let any of these things hold me back anymore and I'm really going to turn my focus to what feels good and what I want to create that it's amazing how oftentimes we'll we'll start to feel better we'll find the right kind of um, medicine or healer 
or whatever it is, and that things will just start to feel like they're clicking by and working better because we're in a better state. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So we're toward the end of the hour. So do you have a closing story or anything that you would like to share with everyone? Tash? Um, if not, I, can, I can come up with something. Yeah, so I go ahead. That I'll probably post. Um, I'm going to post these on the Facebook page, and these. Um, so what I what I think I'd like to do is I'm just going to share a little story. It's another one. I see these stories on athletes, particularly young athletes, that just completely just grab me. If I'm walking by the TV and I see some of them on, it's like I stop everything just to watch some of these stories because they just get me. I think part of the reason why some of these stories grab me so tightly is because they're, they're young people who feel like they have fewer limitations on themselves than I sometimes can dream of. And especially if I were 16 or 17 years old, and it just blows me away. And one of them is this girl where I saw this story, and she um, ran track and then started to have some things happen where, like, there was tingling in her feet and maybe tingling in her hands and, like, a little bit of numbing and something just wasn't quite right. And then they went into her doctor and learned that she has MS. And I think at the time she was, I think 17 when she was diagnosed. I think so. She still wanted to run track. And she was, I don't even think at the beginning, I can't remember when she became like such a great athlete because she was middle of the road but then started training more and more and more. And I think that in a way it was almost like her soul sparked this realization of if I'm going to lose the ability, then I'm going to give it all I got. And she ended up becoming the fastest girl in her region. But as she ran and the symptoms of MS started to increase as time went on, she would lose feeling in her legs as she was running and competing. So she would say that as her body warms up is when she would start to lose feeling. So of course, she's running a race, she's warming up. So she could be halfway through the race and not feel her legs anymore, which to me, I'm like, how do you even know like, how does the body know how to place your feet and, and work so well? So that blew me away. And then at the finish line, she would literally collapse into her coach's arms because she couldn't even walk. After she stopped, she couldn't stand up. She couldn't walk. It went from running to collapsing. And then they would have to carry her off of the track and onto the field and then put ice bags around her legs. But she didn't let it ever stop her of getting not only the diagnosis, not only the symptoms, but all the way to having her legs numb while she's running. And to me, it was just like, gosh, how could I ever complain about some things with like my running or my legs or whatever a but then another part was like how could i ever think that i could limit myself from just these thoughts that i have when other people don't and then they can do these amazing amazing things 
So this is a story that I am going to post on our Facebook because I found, I found it online and it's just an amazing story. And there's a few others that I'll find that I've seen that I'll post. But as we close today, what I would invite everyone to do, I, I say let's just take a collective breath. And in the breath of just feeling that the energy of that girl and her ability to run, the energy of the woman who lost her legs and is now a world-class snowboarder, the energy of all of those people runs through us too. It's a universal current that we all have but it's finding your own unique current and whatever it is is your unique dream and what you really want. But it's when you tap into that, that that's when you get that rocket fuel to go. It's not finding somebody else's or trying to look like or do like somebody else, but it's knowing that it's already within and it's tapping into it. So I'd say let's just do a closing breath and then we'll, we'll finish for today. So just a long, deep inhale. And exhale. So I thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was so much fun. Yes, thank you guys for being here. I'm so glad that you guys came and brought things up. And um, we will be meeting again next month. And we'll have a little topic um, beforehand that will let you guys know what we're going to discuss. So that way, if you, again, have questions or things that you want to throw at us, um, then you'll be able to do that. And also, when we send out the recording, we will... Um, send you the link for the private Facebook group for anyone who's on Facebook. If you want to go there and share your stories or, you know, ask questions or post anything that you've thought of since the call, um, feel free to do that as well. Yeah. And I'm going to unmute everybody if they want to say any last thing or just say hi or bye. Everybody is now unmuted. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. It's so fun. Bye, guys. Sasha, I'm very not sure who was talking after me, but I didn't hear. I couldn't hear any of it. Was there a reason for that? Could you hear it? It was broken oh, up a bit, but I gathered a little. Can I you? gather what Melissa was saying. Yeah, it was a little okay. bit broken up, but yeah. Okay. Okay, I, yeah, I heard about her saying something about the medical, um, Tai Gong, I think it was. Qi Gong. Yeah, so <laughs> Melissa, if you, could, if you could join, oh, if you could tell, you know, maybe on the Facebook page, tell me more about that. I'd love to sure. try to figure out what that is here in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's yeah. been a real um, gift that I've, I've, uh, you know, been able to take part in and, and share with uh, my clients now that, uh, you know, something that uh, allows you to be responsible for your health care. And um, I just think that it's, it's very empowering. Just as these, this, these sessions, I see these are going to be very empowering. Um, Tasha, I loved how you had the, um, you know, your, your little verse there that you keep on your, <laughs> on your laptop. And it's motivated me to think of, what it is that uh, will push me each day, get up in the morning and put a smile on my face and say, yeah, that's what I need to do. <laughs> get me going. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'll post all those phrases in the Facebook group too so that, oh, good. you know, okay. you want to copy and paste them. I missed the third one, so that will be good. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. All right, well, everybody have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye. Good to meet with you guys again. Yeah. Bye. Can't wait until next time.
All right. Bye. Bye.